Well, well, we are back. What a day, huh? So a massive, massive shout out to Honky Donkey, who is now a supporter of the GoFundMe book. A massive thank you to Honky Donkey. Because Honky Donkey was one of my first ever followers a very long time ago, back in the day when I was just had a few followers. And Honky Donkey would watch every single video. In fact, Honky Donkey was my number one super fan. And yet Honky Donkey never, ever, ever, ever made a comment ever. And so it freaked me out. I'm like, who is this person just watching me and never saying anything? So uh, <laughs> I never had Honky Donkey in my VIP scopes because I had no idea who it was and I couldn't vet them, right? Anyway, eventually, I know, finally today, today, after how long, Honky Donkey sends me a private message and introduces him or herself. I won't say anything about them. Uh, they actually put some money, a donation down for the book. So we are now, thanks to Honky Donkey, up to 1,300 people. Honky Donkey, if you're listening, if you could somehow... Uh, and let me know the answers to the questions I asked you from GoFundMe. And you can send me the answers to Gabsmacked. <laughs> Gabsmacked at Facebook. You can email me the answers so I can know more about you. And then I can add you to the GoFundMe scope. And I can add you to the VIP and everything else. Because you actually are my number one guy. <laughs> and yet, or woman, whatever. I don't even know yet. Um, so... Uh, uh, it's so funny that this person, Honky Donkey, has been watching more of my videos more times than anyone and never made a single comment. <laughs> I'm having a nightmare. The only reason that Honky Donkey is now my number three fan is because I have not let Honky Donkey in to my VIP or my uh, other scopes because I, didn't, I couldn't vet the person. <laughs> that was the only reason. <laughs> Otherwise, he or she or it would have been my number one viewer. Um, do you vet everyone to a low degree? I mean, it would be very easy for you to be like a government um, agent watching my videos, right? You, you, it would not. So I'm still careful about what I say. But the more someone interacts with me, the more that, like, if they do a donation or a book purchase, it be, and I and I and they send their mailing address, and I can see the legitimacy of the mailing address, and it matches up with who they are and all that, then it becomes very easy. They become like pretty much like my family, right? <laughs> So I've already read this for my GoFundMe and where to buy the book. It is gofundme.com forward slash gabsmacked. It's $50 Australian. So put in 50, but I think if you're in the US, it'll be 36, 37 or 30 bucks, whatever um, they charge you. And you just got to make your donation anonymous. So I can send you a pre, what do you call it? A pre, a pre, a pre-order assigned copy and make sure you put your mailing address and make it um, anonymous so no one else can see your address. All right, they're the main things to do. All right, so I'm going to read what I've already read to my private scopers. And this is called From Victim to Bully. There were now only martial arts, speed cycling, and reading more about people, filling the void between oases of comments, acknowledging my unusual level of physical fitness. Through my mountain bike and a lot of time, I was discovering new and beautiful landscapes farther and farther afar. Dad would say, Della uncle rrr, hello for me. And I would ride there and tell uncle Roro that my dad said hello. And he would ask me to say hello back, leaving me to ride straight back home to tell my dad the good news. So because I'm starting at half the book with autism, if someone would tell me say hello to them, I didn't realize that you guys neurotypicals say that just as a metaphor. So I would go all the way to their place and say, guess what? My dad said hello and then I'd leave. So they would think, why is this person just coming to say hello and then leave? So that's what I was doing. And then he would say, say hello back. So I would go all the way back home and tell my dad he said hello. And then I couldn't understand why my dad was shocked that I went there to say that. So these are little autistic behaviors, right? Over and over in each day, I would share my dad's greetings with family members located across the vast flatness of Sydney. In other words, that's what I would just do all day, right? Because I didn't realize, I hello, 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 and I say hello. All right. After riding 16 kilometers, which is about 10 miles, after riding 10 miles to Isaiah's place in 14 minutes, Micah, my brother, Micah baptized me, the machine, as he hung on for dear life on the back of my bike, 
whilst wearing his rollerblades. Machine! Oh! I'll be going like, at 40 miles an hour, there's legs. <laughs> Taking packets of chips with me on solo adventures. I once stopped to eat whilst wearing my tight green fluoro shirt and rainbow colored shorts. With autism, you don't know how to wear clothes. You just wear whatever you have. You don't get mixing and matching. The day that two teenagers approached me, I was delighted to hear them greet me with hi and could not comprehend why they then warned me to get out of their street. I just froze, wondering if they may be screaming at someone behind me and was almost witnessing them from outside my body bring their threats closer as though I was just simply the audience. Like the dance where I smoothly bolted out of the room, that's another story in the book, my legs jumped onto the bike, leaving the plastic chips bag on the floor as the guys started kicking my rear tire. After being so distressed at the thought of littering, because as the autist, these little details, right? I begged the gigantic legs beneath me to tell me why they didn't take those boys down as quickly as I pedaled away, whilst only briefly wondering why strangers would want to hurt me. The child could only surmise that these gangsters must have had connections to the school kids and were perhaps asked to hurt him if he was sighted. So the young autistic Gabsmack couldn't understand why they just picked on this guy randomly, right? And he thought, Gabsmack thought that because all the kids at school were abusing him every day, that there was a connection between the two. After almost three years of martial arts training, because I'd been bashed at the age of 10 by a 16 year old, so I took up martial arts, it dawned on the young Gabsmack that it was not enough to know it in theory. And he realized it was now time to use it. The anger would pulsate through my vein covered arms and would only oscillate like a pendulum between my upper and lower body. Dissipate it would never. And the anger only made me more angry. I was disgusted at my desire for vengeance upon Eddie. That was the guy that bashed me when I was 10. Peter, the guy who'd been abusing me for two years. The gangsters, the teachers who would say, put your hand up if you think Gabriel's an idiot. And upon myself for letting this happen, wanting only to sit in the woods beyond the great lion heads, watching the sun stream through the trees with no memories, no anger, and no videos. I'm going to skip that there was a suicide note and something that happened. I'm going to skip that. Two years of torture via the talking ape, Peter, had now concluded. Although still taller than me, I was now unsure of what I was capable with this muscular 13 year old six foot male now performing the splits upside the walls of classrooms during the inception of some of the lessons. Kicks were destroying Nathaniel's punching bags and punches were now focused on palm trees at speeds that made even Nathaniel's father Roro applause. Any day now would be the day I would finally react. Jamil, now an almost 14 year old man with a baby blonde beard that he let grow during the holidays had a fear of himself that helped him feel safe against others he should have feared even more. The first venting of that fear came through a crack in his composure. The day he stared at Peter Barry's chin and said, mate, you'd better watch it. One day I'm going to lose my temper. Jamil Gabsmacked was visibly shaking from that fear, scared of what would happen if he were to be consumed by the rage incubated within him like a venomous reptile ready to hatch. I did not want to be angry. I wanted everyone to be friends, my friends. The day the reptile hatched commenced no differently from any other. Bullying one of his own followers, I spluttered a line to Peter Barry from a movie I'd recently seen, asking him with more fear than I'd ever felt to pick on someone your own size. I didn't mean myself, but that didn't change his gaze of fire 
which locked onto me as he headed straight towards me while throwing his massive fist in my face. Like handball, time slowed right down. And the past three years of training were before my eyes all at once. I blocked the punch with my left arm and within seconds we were surrounded by others. Watching the smaller guy withstanding the force of Barry's fridge-like arm with seemingly no effort whilst resting his right forearm on an empty bag wrapped rack. Frustrated, Barry threw his massive fist at me again, which I blocked again. His reign of bullying was about to come to an end. Anyway, the really good part I'm going to skip because that's for the book. How I take him down is interesting. And this is where the beast took over. The beast was appearing in the chapters before this. The beast grew within me and he came out that day for the first time. And Gabsmack's last name, Levant. Hey, Sprinkles. Gabsmack Levant. The crowd was cheering. Levant, Levant, Levant. And Levant stood there with his arms out. The beast within me raised my arms parallel to the tennis court ground as though the remaining gladiator before his slain enemy. If I could go to my class early enough, I could now sit at the back of the room. A monster was growing within me and I loved it. So there you go. That is the rereading, the dramatic rereading of from, from victim to bully. And then the book descends into some heavy violence after that. So thank you very much for listening, everybody. I may or may not go to my GoFundMe audience later this evening and just hang out. You will have to watch the replay, my beloved Sprinkles. And I wish you a lovely day as always. And I had a lot of fun on Six Lang today. Six Lang, we met, we have a new friend called Jibril Suleiman. And he is a heavily bearded man uh, who uh, is very good at Arabic. And so teaches us Arabic while doing some dancing and stuff, which is pretty good. And Gabversity was actually today, we did quantum mechanics. And I was surprised at how many people loved the quantum mechanics lecture, even though it was heavily mathematics based. So it was lovely. Um, anyway, I wish you all a beautiful evening and to our GoFundMe and Patreon guests whom I love very dearly as much as everyone else. I will probably see you later.